if you have a question about something, possibly somebody else does. And it's kind of neat to have this opportunity to still be in community. Otherwise I could just record these and not be here to hang out. Hanging out's cool. I'm gonna stay up here so I can let people in through the waiting room. Uh, like that. Hmm. Hey Annie, welcome. Uh, we're gonna use a strap today. I am seated on a pillow. I highly recommend having something that you can sit on. It helps to elevate the hips, relaxes uh, the legs a little bit, makes sitting a little bit easier. And also we're gonna do kind of a bit of stuff on our knees. So if you wanna have anything extra to cushion that just so that you're not fucking up your knees because it's really easy to fuck up your knees. It's easy for knees to be angry about things. Um, they tend to win that argument of whether or not you should be doing something that is bothering your knees. So just do that. Um, I was kind of like scroll around some inspirational ideas. I'm like, oh, like what, what do I want to talk about today that's not like <laughs> too heavy because that's 2020. Um, and I was, um, I was kind of going through some stuff about body positivity and there was some, somebody saying like, why, why exactly is it that we get so caught up on this body that we had when we were like 16? You know, like most of us, especially those of us who are maybe of the more like femme leaning kind of folk. We look back at that time in our life as maybe, um, for often a lot thinner. No, like things are more elevated on most of us. Um, and it's, it's awful and degrading to our hearts to, to idolize that body. We were still children. Um, it's disastrous on our psyche to idolize a physical form that we are no longer possessing because it's this way now. And it's also, of course, you know, disastrous to try to compare ourselves to the physical form that others are occupying because I don't have that form, I have this form. And this is the one that I'm working with. To be able to stick into that reality and actually connect to that is really important. And um, as we move into a couple of the postures today, um, we can breathe, yay, I'm very excited about this. We're gonna do some uh, heart opening and some deep breath work exercises. And as we get into some stuff around shoulders, um, there are a couple of binds in yoga poses that um, may appear to have to do with flexibility. And really a lot of it has a lot more to do with the length of your arms or the length of your legs. Um, like you have to have enough like enough reach to be able to grab things a lot. I kind of have orangutan arms, so things are very, it's a lot easier for me to grab my arms anywhere they need to go. Um, but not a lot of people have extremely long arms. So that's why we have the strap. We'll be using that um, not as a like, oops, I can't do the pose thing. It's a, can I let this physical form be a part of my physical form and then build up and, and create a little bit more accessibility with that. So. Um, it, yeah, I'm gonna stop mumbling. Yeah, Marie Nam. Um, we are gonna start with a really beautiful um, deep breathing exercise. Um, we're just going to do pretty much the opposite of what we did last week, where it said breathe as easy and slow as possible. We're gonna be very intentional and like full diaphragmatic about our breath. So you wanna feel an opening in your rib cage around like our heart space and also in your belly. And we also did this thing, um, if I take your hands onto your ribs, we were kind of practicing like breathing onto one side of the ribs over the last couple of weeks. So you can maybe just take a few breaths and see if you can feel all of that expanding just because touch is really neat. It's really powerful. And unless you're enjoying holding on to your rib cage, you can let your hands rest down and just kind of see if you can find that quality of breath in and out through your nose. Mm. 
and still take your time with your breath. Taking your time to give an opportunity to pull in a good amount of air, to really enjoy the experience of letting it all go and having this continuous cycle, just moving in your body. There is another way perhaps to think of this as you keep breathing, of this relationship that we might have with our body compared to other bodies and our body compared to a state that it has been in at different times. If we have to go back to that body, we probably also have to go back to that experience level and that consciousness, that depth that we uh, cultivate throughout the years and as we age. Perhaps a better way to send our focus when we think like, oh, my knees have gotten crinkly, crinky, <laughs> creaky. My, my body is in a different shape than it was before. Skin is in a different shape than it was before. What have I traded for that in the depth of my heart, in my headspace? I'll take just a few more moments and a few more breaths to consider all of the beautiful things that have come with experience in your life. Take another big breath in through your nose and exhale it through your mouth. Again, like that. For three ohms. And then you're going to start to come onto your hands and knees and you might want to grab your pillow. You're going to go take a nap. Yes, good girl. I'm going to just bring it underneath your knees. Go ahead and come into the center of your mat. And then you're going to take one of your feet. If you want to mirror me, you can just take your right foot out. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna leave your toes down. See if you can push the outside of your foot down. So the pinky toe edge of your foot. We're getting right into it today. <laughs> so if you're feeling a little stiff, a little creaky back in those hips, then you can bend the knee a little bit. That's gonna back that off. If you're feeling a little bit more loose, you might even walk your hands forward a little bit, which will drop your torso down. Cool. And bring back in that rich, full inhale and exhale. In and out through your nose, putting some power into it. Breathing in, breathing out. And then if you walk your hands forward, go ahead and pull them back in. You're gonna take your right knee down and then extend your left foot out to the side. And you can bend the knee a little bit if that makes it less intense. And if my other hip was really <laughs> tight and this one not so much. So you might notice that one side just feels a little bit different trying to release the 
pinky toe edge of your foot down. You might walk those hands forward a little bit. Maybe this is the side that was super tight on you. And then instead of focusing on any sort of worry about what the body's doing um, or how the body is reacting, you start to focus more on your breath. When we focus on the breath, we can observe what's happening in the body. Maybe calm our reaction to what's happening in the body. Breathing in. Breathing out. and then bring both knees in. And you're gonna move through a few cat and cows. So you'll drop your belly and lift your tail and look up. And as you exhale, round through the spine, really tuck your tail in. And inhaling to cow pose, exhaling to cat pose. To keep the volume an intention of your breath going as you move through these shapes. One more round. Big breath in, drop that belly down. Big breath out, tuck that belly up. And then come out towards a more neutral spine. And you're going to take your right foot up outside of your right hand. So you want it to be kind of wide. Yeah. And then you're going to start moving that foot forward. You've got a little bit more space than you might have started off with. And then start to bend into your elbows. Really softening on the inside of this leg. And what might happen is your right hip might start to slide out to the side. It's fine if it does that a little bit, but can you offer it the opportunity to glide back towards your back foot? Mm -hmm. yourself. I thought she said we were heart opening today. We will. One more breath in. Soften as you breathe out. And start to lift yourself back up. You're going to take your right knee and your right toe and rotate them out to the side so your leg rotates open. And then take your left hand further forward and let your hips move forward. And then take your right hand up onto your right thigh. Now push down in the right foot and push down in your right hand so that your heart opens up. And make sure you're also pushing into your left hand too because you don't want to be falling into that shoulder joint or rather finding more space. And for extra fanciness, you can reach your arm back. You could make a cool mudra. A mudra is a hand gesture, so the horns count. Yeah. Anything you like. You can open those collarbones, feel your chest expand as you breathe in. Soften something as you breathe out. And take your hands down. Turn your toes forward. And then you're gonna walk the foot in and bring your hands up onto your front thigh. Now, for many of us, we're gonna back up out of this because it's a lot of sensation that's going on in the hips. See if you can just tilt your hips forward a little bit. It doesn't have to be too intense, but just to make sure that you're still sending this forward motion. And put your hands into your back pockets. Probably they are imaginary back pockets, but if you have real back pockets, you're welcome to place them inside. <laughs> and then relax your shoulders down and let your heart lift up and forward. And if you're finding balance to be a challenge, that is a normal human experience, especially in this pose, push into your front foot to help with that. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more breath in. Breathe out. Start to pull your hips back. And then gracefully or not so gracefully at all, go ahead and bring the right foot back. 
and then you'll take the left hand outside of, or left foot outside of your left hand and then try to move the foot forward a little bit just because a lot of times it kind of ends up back here and I want to at least get that foot a little bit in front of the knee and then you're going to settle down sometimes in lizard pose this is more of a variation of lizard pose sometimes lizard pose is like really open and that has plenty of benefits. What we wanna do here is really relax the thigh bone inside of the hip socket. So by just settling down, uh, that creates a little bit more of that effect. Is your left hip gliding out to the left or can you rest it back towards your right foot? Elbows might be a little bent or a lot of bent or you might still be up on fingertips with your eyebrows up in your hairline and any of that's fine. You just soften what you can. Big breath in, big breath out, and then start to turn your left knee and left toe out to the left. So you have that rotation. That rotation will probably allow you to bring your hips a little bit further forward. Take your right hand further forward. So you keep giving the hips the cue to go forward. And then your left hand is going to come up onto your left thigh. Push into both your left hand and your left foot and your right hand and start to spiral your heart open and outwards towards the left side. And you think soft in your hips, weighted in your hips, just yielding to gravity. Maybe your left arm also opens up and back. And then notice if your shoulder is leaning forward on the left shoulder, then you can roll that left shoulder back so the collarbone is more open. And breathing in, staying as you breathe out, and then coming back to face towards the front. You're gonna take your toes forward, scooch them in a little bit so they might have been off of your mat and now they're on your mat. And then your hands come up onto your back pockets, like high-waisted jean back pockets. What's cool about placing the hands here and then getting the stretch in the front of the shoulders, and you might have to lean forward a little bit in those hips, is if you get a really, really big lift up in your rib cage and up and forward in your heart, you can feel the ribs moving away from those back pockets. So you're getting long in the spine. Two more breaths. Exhale. And then take the hips back, take the foot back, and back onto your hands and knees. You've been on your hands a little bit. If you need to take a break from that, come to your fingertips. Move through some more cat and cow. Just inhaling and exhaling and moving around in the spine. Thinking about how your hips feel on your thigh bones as you do this especially after even more hip work. Notice where your shoulders are inside, or your arms are inside of the shoulder socket. One more round of breath. And then relax this movement. You're gonna come down to laying all the way on your belly. Wiggle your legs back, rest your head on your hands. Just take a moment. If your lower back is feeling tender with your feet together, separate your feet about the width of your mat or about the width of your hips. If you're not using a mat, you're doing good. Don't worry about it, it's not necessary. And then start to come up onto your forearms. and pull your collarbones out to the side. So your arm bones will move out to the sides, your collarbones become a little bit wider. 
Push down into your fingertips, down to those forearms. Elbows are right underneath the shoulders, so it's just a prop. It's not anything too strenuous like cobra pose might be. Then you're gonna keep the left shoulder pulled back as you turn your nose down towards your right shoulder. So I'm looking over and down. Breathe in and breathe out. Start to look up and forward and turn your nose down towards your left shoulder and be sure that your right shoulder didn't follow you. Push down in both forearms. Breathing in, breathing out, and then lifting your gaze back up. We're gonna come down and widen those forearms. So now you have this cactus shape with your arms. Take your left hand in underneath your left shoulder, just bringing it in closer to the body, and then turn your left toes back behind you and rest the right side of your head on the floor. Sometimes bending the knee, sometimes putting the foot on the floor feels better. I'm liking a long leg at this point. If I really reach out there, I can feel the opening on the front of my left hip. Being soft and flexible on the front of your right shoulder. It's not gonna necessarily make your shoulder more flexible, but if you give the shoulder the opportunity to find that softness, a significantly greater chance of finding it than if you just keep thinking, oh, I'm tight. One more breath in. Breathing out. And then roll over to find the other side. So you'll send that left, shoulder, left elbow out. So from that cactus shape, the right hand comes in and then the right leg starts to reach back We're just long in this front of the hip. All of the resistance that could be pulling up, could be coming up on the front of your left shoulder. Just give it permission to give it a rest. Like, no, man. I mean, you can chill a bit. One more breath in, one more breath out. And then roll over onto your belly. You're gonna come back up into that sphinx pose. And then probably widen your legs a little bit more. You're gonna bend into your right leg and turn your heel up towards your bum. And take your left hand over towards your right elbow. And then here, take your hand and first you're gonna to try to grab the inside of your foot. If this is not happening, you're gonna take your strap and grab around your ankle. And then you can, I'm so awkward with things. You can just pull yourself in. If you can easily grab your foot, you can hang out here. What I'd like you to do at this point is start to turn your heart forward and maybe you push that foot back to get a little stretch on the front of your shoulder. And then check if you're still breathing, because sometimes that goes away at this point. Exhale. And then you're going to stop pushing the foot, uh, foot out. You're going to just pull that foot in. If you've got the strap, you're just going to pull the foot in and see how that goes. If you have the um, hand with the fingertips facing uh, towards the pinky toe, you might turn the hands to the fingertips face down towards your ankle. Try not to pull the foot out to the side. You don't want to torque your knee like that. You want to bring the foot in towards your glutes. What you might do is turn your fingertips in the same direction as your toes. But I'm going to be honest, that's like the easiest that has gone for me in a long time. We just did a lot of shoulder work. And then see about your heart going forward again. Soften something as you exhale. And then you're gonna slowly release the foot so that the knee doesn't snap. Go ahead and drop the foot down. Come on to your uh, chest again. Make a pillow for your hands with your forehead, forehead, forearms. Pillow for your head, 
with your hands. Okay, you're doing great. <laughs> Wiggle your hips side to side to soften that low back space. And you're like, man, she just told me like 10 things I could be doing. Because you could, you could do like 10 of those things. You could use the strap, you could push, you could pull, you could turn your hand around and you don't have to do any of them. Or you could just pick one. Maybe at some point you just decide to do look asana, which is when you just sit there and you look around at what weird things are happening and, you know, catch up again in a minute. Let's catch up then and do the other side. Okay. And then come up onto your elbows. You're gonna bring your right hand over towards your left elbow. You're gonna bend into the left leg. And I find most of us say this is about the easiest way to grab on. Don't sit down in your shoulder as much as you can help it. You wanna lift up and forward. And then what you might do to give yourself a little bit of space to get into some of that weird hand stuff is to push that foot back. Feel the front of your shoulder stretching out. And maybe this is like the side where your knee is wonky or um, whatever it is where you might want to grab a strap and you just grab a strap and you might push that foot back and get some opening in the front of your chest. And then to change it out, you're going to try to bring the foot in more and you might turn your fingertips down. Maybe that's not working in your shoulder and you stay here holding on to the big toe side of your foot. Maybe you are able to get your fingers in the same line as your toes. And this posture is not about like you are only successful if you get your fingers in line with your toes. That's not what it is. It's just an availability for somebody who has the space and just needs a little bit different stretch. Breathing in, breathing out. And you're gonna start slowly releasing the hand, the knee, Come on down, rest your head, wiggle your pelvis around a bit. Ah. And from here, we'll start to move into puppy dog pose, also called heart melting pose or anahatasana. And we're gonna let the heart melt. And the heart's gonna melt from the strength in the outsides of your shoulders, the outsides of your armpits. So you're gonna be on your hands. You could be on your fingertips or on your palms, it's up to you. The heart melts down, the tailbone flies up. You can rest your forehead, unless you prefer to rest your chin, in which case you might do that. I like the forehead personally. You're gonna feel the outer armpits pushing out into your hands, and that's gonna create some heat around your shoulders, some strength around your shoulders, some space around your upper back. And with every exhale, let your heart melt down a little bit more towards the floor. Breathe in, push into those hands from the outer armpits. Exhale, let your heart melt down. Take two more breaths like that. Exhale. And then you're gonna start to squat those hands back in and lift yourself up. I'm gonna curl your toes under, spread the fingertips out. Hands should be about a doorway's distance apart or about underneath your shoulders. And then you're gonna lift your hips up in a downward facing dog. And you can have very bent knees the first time, especially if you're still feeling a little bit tighter on the hips and hammies. But your shoulders are pressing down into your hands with all of that kind of strength that you had in the puppy dog pose now that you are a big, strong, wiser dog. Hopefully wiser. Most of us get wiser as we age. Experienced dog, we'll go with that. Try to relax your heels down. Take a breath in, breathe out, and lower your knees down. I'm gonna take one hand and just flip it over. And go back to the way it was. Take the other hand, flip it over. Go back to the way it was. 
spread your fingertips out. We're going to go into downward facing dog again and we'll move on from there. So if you want to just walk your hands back to your feet right away, you can do that or you can take three huge big inhales, big sigh out through the mouth. Take a big inhale, big sigh out through the mouth. Keep those strong armpits, inhale, exhale. And then you're gonna come back to the back of your mat. You can widen your feet before you go back there or you could widen your feet once you get back there. And then your feet are maybe about the width of your mat or wider than your hips. Bend your knees as much as you need to to feel okay in this fold. Okay enough in the fold that you can leisurely release the neck by kind of wiggling the head out. Good. All right. If you've got some weird hip and knee stuff, I want you to just sit your bum down with wide legs so you're like faking a squat. It's not fake, it's just your squat today. If you can turn those toes and knees out. You might do this like little dance thing that I often have to do in order to get my heels down. You can do that. You can slide that pillow underneath your heels to give yourself some space. I'm going to try to bring the hands up into the heart. Now, if you're just sitting down with your bum down and your feet down, same thing. Yeah, elbows on the inside. Try to push down in your feet to connect with all corners of the feet rooting down into the floor. As you press into your hands, letting your heart open up towards your thumbs. Good. Breathing in. Breathing out. And then for funsies, if you are into such a thing, you might come right from the squat and you might use your hands on your legs to do it. Stand up. Ah. Okay, well, that was enough of that. About, um, now, not as wide as you could be in your legs, but kind of wide. Turn your toes and your knees out. For most of us, the knees are only going to open up like like a pie shape, not like 180 degrees. So find that space where your knees and your toes line up and you don't have to go the deepest ever into your Buddha spot here. You're gonna rest the thigh bones down in the hip socket, push into the pinky toe edges of your feet and take the hands open. Spread out those fingertips. See if you can feel your heart spreading out your fingertips and what changes on the in happens in, the, in between your heart and your fingertips. Like, do your shoulders open more? Do your collarbones open more? Can you feel any power in your arms here? If the answer is no, April, you're insane. That's also fine. Breathe in, breathe out. Stand up, relax your arms down. I'm gonna come into tree pose. We're gonna do a couple of standing balances. So if you wanna be near something that you could hold on to, by all means do that. We won't stay too long in any of these spaces. You're gonna take your right foot on the inside of your left leg, left toes face forward. They could be on your calf, could be on your thigh, please not on your knee. We're gonna lengthen that knee away from us, feeling the front of the hips opening up. And you're gonna take your hands to your heart and push into your hands to feel the strength opening in your chest. Take one more breath, pushing the hands. See if you can soften something as you stop pushing the hands. And then take your foot and set it down. Wiggle and shift to the other side. I do want to try to get the foot off of the ground so you can take maybe your foot and put it up on something. If you get your foot at least up to your Half, you can usually open this knee a lot more. So however high it goes on you is fine. Lift the front of your hips, open this knee, hands at the heart. And as you push into the hands and you open the chest, don't just like chest burst out of it. You wanna also lift up tall, up through the backs of your ears. Your chest opening up with that power in your palms. Soften into the space you've opened up as you exhale. Go ahead and take your foot 
cut it down and wiggle things out a little bit. Okay. We're gonna have another quad stretch. We did a bunch of them. Also gonna open this shoulder. If you wanna go for like a full um, dancer's pose where you catch the inside of your foot and like really go deep into this, that's great if that's part of your practice. Um, you feel confident about going there, go for it. If you want to take your strap at this point, you might just loop it, or even use your strap to hold on. And your grip on the strap could be a lot longer. You're just gonna stand up tall on your one leg and push that foot back and feel your shoulder opening. Awesome. A lot of power in this standing leg to stay lifted here. Breathing in, breathing out, and relax, switch to the other side. If you feel better in dancer's pose, do dancer's pose where you have that hand grab. This is an adaptation. It's going to do a little bit more of this uh, shoulder opening. I do recommend holding the inside of the foot if you are holding onto the foot because it's going to help you keep the knee down because you don't want to do it out here like fire hydrant. I'm going to keep it in. Yeah. I'm going to push that foot back and don't sit into those back pockets. You still have to lift up out of those back pockets. All right. One more breath in the pose, at least. And then relax it. Drop your step. Not really. <laughs> in your hands. We're going to do a little bit of shoulder flossing. Start off with your knees like just nice and bent, nice and easy. You're just going to take your um, hands, bring them wider than your shoulders, and give yourself permission to slide those hands out on the strap as you need it. But you don't know how much you need it yet. Just going to take your hands up. You're going to lift the strap up above your head. And then see how much you need to or how much benefits you to open the hands out on that strap and then take the strap up and over. A lot of times the up and over is a little bit easier than the going back. What you might notice after you inhale, raise it up and exhale, lower it. And inhale, raise it up and exhale, lower it. It gets a little bit easier. So you just scoot your hands a little bit closer and let them move out as they need to. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, let it go back. Now, what you've probably been doing is what I've been doing is kind of like arching through the spine as you do this. So see if you can keep that lift in the front of your pelvis. It changes that feeling around your shoulders a little bit. You can exercise that lift into your spine and your core muscles while still having a really steady flow of breath. Inhale, exhale. Go ahead and finish up this round wherever you happen to be at. I'm gonna take the strap a little bit narrower. And then I'm gonna go with about shoulder width apart here. You could even like wrap your hands around if you're having a hard time like holding on with your fingers. Sometimes finger tension really gets up in the rest of the body. So if you can maybe use some friction if that's helpful to you. And then take your right foot back behind your left foot. You're gonna reach your hands up. And you're gonna pull the strap apart a little bit, just enough that you feel your armpits kind of open up, right? And you might have the strap a little bit more above your face. And you're gonna keep pulling the strap apart as you side bend over towards the left side and push into your right foot, which is your back foot. And then also reaching the strap out. Mm -hmm. Breathing in, breathing out, and then coming on up, just going to switch the feet so that the left foot comes behind, and then lean my hands just a little bit forward, pull apart, reach out, and then side bend up and over towards the left side. You want to push, or I'm sorry, the right side, you're going to push into that left foot, that back foot, breathe in, breathe out. And come on up. Gonna widen the legs. 
not as wide as you could, but wide enough that hopefully the fold is gonna be like really easy in the pelvis. And then you're gonna take your strap back behind you and either hold on to your strap or say, thanks strap, I've had enough, and you're gonna hold hands behind your back. Either way is fine. I recommend bent elbows if you are holding hands because it's really gonna let you open those elbows back up. Come on down into a fold. If you're feeling really loose in this fold, loose in your hips, you might have straighter legs, you might have way more bent legs. Man, I'm actually really liking the bent legs right now. It's giving me a lot more room to relax my stretch rather than trying to push my stretch. Just feeling a little bit more inquisitive, especially in the midst of all of these fairly hard upper body movements we're doing. I just want to be easy in my hands. You might wiggle your arm bones around slightly just in case they've changed their feeling now that they're up above your head. One more exhale. Start to draw your belly in, hands to the hips or down on the back. Lift yourself up. Now, if you had the strap in your hand, you're going to go ahead and take it out, make sure you've got a clear mat space. And you're gonna come into warrior one. I'll do it facing you. And you've got the space between your legs, bent front leg, knee right above your ankle. You're gonna take your hands behind your back. And you're either gonna put your hands together or interlace your fingers. I think sometimes interlacing the fingers makes it a little bit harder. You're gonna bring your hands over to the right side of your waist. Try to soften both elbows down. Try to rest your left hip gently forward. And you can lean a little bit forward in this, but it's just like a little bit, not like all the way, yeah? Just enough to keep that space in your lower back. And then you're gonna turn your nose down towards your fingers. And stand on strong feet. Nice, easy breath as you rest those elbows back. Breathing in. Breathing out. Start to lift your head up and then relax your shoulders. You're just going to come to the other side. Okay. You'll have a little bit of space between your feet. The back foot is up a little bit, bent in the front knee. And it's just that, try that like little bend forward, like just to like two degrees. And all of a sudden the low back has more space. How cool is that, right? You're gonna take your hands together, bound or just palms together over at the left side of your waist. Draw those elbows back, soften the collarbones down and then look down towards your hands. Try to relax the right side of your neck. Get a little stretch kind of in that space right behind the ear too. It's quite yummy. Breathing in. Breathing out. And start to lift your head up. Release your hands. Step yourself up. And then now bring the legs out real wide. So you're gonna get them out roughly underneath your hands as much as you can. And then we're gonna turn over towards the right side. So turn your right toes all the way over and your left toes all the way over. Come into warrior two. Make sure that you're pulling the thigh back. And then you're gonna put your left hand in your back pocket. And then lift your heart up towards your fingertips. I'm not going back. I'm not going over towards my back foot. I'm going up. Give yourself stretch up higher. Big breath in. Exhale, warrior two. Keep pulling that right thigh bone back. Reach out over the leg slowly so you know you really feel it. And you're either going to put your elbow on your thigh or try to hold onto your shin. For the most part, it's the same shape. This is a little more intense. So if you're into the intensity, go for it and you're gonna open your shoulder up. Try not to dump out your rib cage, keep the ribs in, open the shoulder. Big exhale, let it all go. 
And then you're gonna come down into a forward fold. So you're gonna bring your hands down, turn all 10 toes forward, and find something vaguely like relaxation, even if forward folding is not your favorite thing. Just like, okay, that hard side angle thing is just done with for a minute. Awesome. Breathe in. Breathe out. Little bend in the knees if it wasn't there already. Draw the belly in, hands to the hips. Stand yourself up. Ready for the other side? Good, me too. Take your left toes over and your right toes over. And as you bend into this leg, just try to get your knee and toe in the same direction. Generally the same path there. Pull that thigh bone back. And from warrior two, with this open chest, we open it up even more into peaceful warrior. Hand at the back pocket. And I wanna lift up. I should be able to feel my rib cage. The energy in my rib cage, at the very least, is reaching up and away from that back hand. Try not to reach up through your right shoulder. Can you relax that down and let your heart open up to those fingertips? And you still breathe here. It's hard, it's kind of hard to breathe in a really open-hearted space. Just notice how you respond to that. Breathe in. Exhale, returning to warrior two. Making sure that you're drawing that left thigh bone back, reaching out slowly so you really feel it. And you're either gonna have your elbow down. If you need to have the elbow down, if that feels better to you, try to put a little less weight on the elbow or you can try holding your shin. You could hold your ankle if that's accessible to you. Doesn't matter where you're holding. Stand in strong feet. Open the chest at the top, not the bottom. Soften those ribs in. Can you open your collarbones more? Are you still breathing? Big breath in, big breath out. And then we're gonna, oh, we're gonna come down and fold. Oh, my bad, my bad. It doesn't matter, <laughs> just fold. Sequencing and choreography and stuff is just not, not the primary focus of our practice. Ah, see what you can relax on your next exhale. Start to bring your hands to your hips, lift yourself up. Find your strap. Come on in. What are we doing? Hmm. We'll do it standing. We got this. I'm going to show from behind because it's a little bit easier to notice um, exactly what's going on from behind. You're going to come into Warrior Two with your right foot forward, okay? You're gonna take your strap over your left shoulder. And everything's black, god damn it, <laughs> okay. So, from warrior two, you're gonna pull your right hip back and come down and you can go ahead and rest on your thigh this time. You're gonna take your left hand, turn your palm to face back behind you. And then you're gonna bend your elbow so the back of your hand gets as close to the outside of your bum as possible. Okay? And you need to maybe kind of tilt that strap back. You see what it like? Ha! Good. And then I'm opening my collarbone and I'm pushing down on this bottom hand. And maybe this is just where I'm at, like pressing my hand against the small of the back and coming in here because it's just feeling very strong and you can come out of it. Or, you start to take the elbow down on the inside of your thigh. If your hips went all the way back out to the side, you just know that you have to try to bring them back in. That'll be your work. You're gonna take your right hand underneath. Maybe you grab onto that strap. Maybe you're like, oh man, my hands are right there. I could just hold hands with myself. I don't need this strap. That's fine. The rest of us are gonna grab a strap and you're gonna pull the strap apart to open your chest. Bring that right hip to uh, reach back towards your left foot like it was before. You know, pull the strap apart, open your chest, hopefully still breathing. Maybe you've got one more exhale. And start to release the strap, lift yourself up. Ooh. I'm hot. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, shall we on the other side? I think we shall. 
Um, I'm gonna do this. Okay. Uh, I won't be mirroring you now, it doesn't really matter, but bring your strap onto the other shoulder. Now, I don't wanna let this hip go back and the knee fall in. That's part of the whole knee alignment, keeping this hip pulled in thing. It's also stronger when it's drawn in. I'm gonna reach out, elbow down. This hand, I'm gonna open the collarbone, turn the palm to face behind me and take it down behind my back and then I have to like kinda get over there. Okay, good. Cause I wanted to get my arm over in that position first though, right? So I know where to go. And then you might stay here where you push the hand into the back, but you open that collarbone. Maybe you come down underneath. You're grabbing, not this, not this one. The big one back there, yeah? And then notice what happens as you pull apart, directing your hip back in. Oh, okay, oh, it's harder there. It's a little easier here. It's a little harder in the hips, but this is stronger. You get to decide. You open your chest more. You reach your ears out of your shoulders. Can you take another breath in? Let it out. And start to release your hands and stand up. Oh. Woo. And bring your feet towards each other. Ooh. I'm gonna take your strap and thank it for its service. If you're into that sort of thing. And then we're gonna come into Eagle Pose. So I'm gonna give a little bit of balance. This doesn't need to be a big bend into your legs. If they're feeling very tired, you just have a soft bend. You can go ahead and cross your legs like this. You wanna give a little bit more. You're gonna push your hips back. Notice my knees didn't go forward. At least they barely did. You really wanna push those hips back. Whatever leg is on top, cross the opposite arm on top and either wrap up your feathers, or just give yourself a hug and pull your shoulders forward as you sit those hips back. Can you relax your collarbones here? Like, what would that be like? What would it feel like? How does your body respond to that idea? Big breath in, big breath out. Unwind your arms, unwind your legs. So many balance poses today. Go ahead and cross the other leg on top. You can hang out here little bit of bent, or you can go for it a little bit deeper. Opposite arm as leg will be on top. You can hold on to your shoulders, give yourself a hug, that's all fine. Try not to crouch in. You try to relax and lengthen the back so you're settling your upper butt back. Your upper butt is exactly where you think it is. It's the upper part of your butt that lengthens the lower back. Yeah. Breathe in. Relax your collarbones, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Unwind arms, unwind legs, back to normal, whatever that is. Come up to the front of your mat. Feet are about hip width distance apart. Take a big inhale, just drink in all of that beautiful clean air. And soften as you fold forward over your nice, easy, relaxed legs. Give yourself a little bobble head, yes and no. And then plant your hands down. You need to bend your knees a lot. You might need to take like 10 steps back. Just kind of wiggle your way back into downward dog. Strong arm hits into the hands. Tailbone faces up. Knees are as bent as you need them to be. Try to relax that head. Give your neck a break. Breathe in, big loud sigh, and the knees come down, the knees get wider, the toes might go a bit more together as you sit back into child's pose, and if your child's pose looks a lot like a uh, puppy dog pose, then that's just the kind of kid you are, you're just like a dog kid, a puppy, or you can sit back, just however much works for you. You give your forehead a massage on the mat, getting a little bit more of this grounded energy.
Big breath in. Big breath out. Start walking your hands back in. We're gonna come to take a seat. You might grab this pillow again, because if you sit kind of halfway on a pillow, it will help to bring your hips a little bit more tilted forward. Okay, like if I'm sitting all the way up in the middle of it, I can still tilt my hips back. But if I come kind of up into the front of it, it's really gonna lift my pelvis up and forward. Doesn't matter how close your feet are to your hips, you should try to find something that feels like it makes sense in your body. And then we're gonna lean forward long, not stick straight, but long side. Thinking of your lower back, your pelvic space getting a little bit wider, creating more space to move in this area, to be flexible in this area. One more breath in, one more breath out. Start to lift yourself up. You're gonna keep the legs bent, but you're gonna turn your feet down and your knees up. You're gonna take the hands down, or you take the hands down, if that feels better, yeah? Maybe that lets you lead your heart forward. Maybe your hands forward gives you this a little gentle walking forward that draws you deeper into this fold. Maybe your hands come back behind your feet. You can even walk your feet out more. If any of this was a terrible idea, you go back to what was not a terrible idea. Go back to a place where you were able to breathe be here and have this experience in this body in this pose right now whatever you are doing with that kind of awareness is a perfect yoga practice big breath in big breath out Start to unravel your hands. If you've wound them up with the legs, you're gonna to start to sit yourself up. And then take your, um, take your right leg in and extend your left leg out. I'm just gonna shift a bit so I can see you. Put those left toes up, a little turn away from the leg and then lean out over that leg and take your right arm up and over your nose. So it's just slightly forward. Resting your right hip down, soften the inner right shoulder. Reach the backs of the ears out of your shoulders. Feel the breath moving into those right ribs. One more exhale. Start to lift it up. Switch your legs. Take that side bend on the other side. So with the toes lifted, turn away just a little bit so I can take my side body towards the leg. Other arm comes up, it's just slightly shadowing. Resting that left hip down, softening the inner left shoulder. Big breath in, big breath out. And start to take it up. Make sure that this pillow or whatever you've got is somewhere near you. And we'll use it in just a moment. But for now, we're gonna come down onto our backs without it. And slide your hips up by your feet, lay on down. Just take a moment to let your back meet the ground for a while. Like there's some 
unraveling that seems to be required in our tissues and our musculature just to be like, oh, okay. Lame. Certain things can relax. Beginning to cultivate this sense of surrender. First, we'll make a little offering of our hearts and hips to open in bridge pose. So be sure that your feet are about hip distance apart, that they face forward, that your knees are facing right up, and then you're gonna give a little wiggle of your shoulders underneath your back so your heart is already lifted. And then start to push into your feet, and as you get your heart more lifted, you can wiggle your shoulders and more. Maybe you hold hands underneath your back. Maybe you just press your hands down, push your feet down to feel your hips opening and your heart floating up towards your nose. See if you can keep your breath steady. Right. One more round of breath. And relax your shoulders, softly bring the hips back down onto the mat. Let your feet get a little bit wider. Let your knees knock against each other. Coming from that offering, that opening, back into this grounded sensation, this surrendering. And start to open your arms out a little bit more, maybe make a cactus shape or a T shape. I'm going to bring your knees up and into your chest and then roll them over to your side. It's fine if they're not up really close to you. You might move them a little bit more away to have a less intense twist. And then with a little bit of pressure in the back of the right arm, you can open the left collarbone a bit more. And then once you've opened it about as much as it's inclined to go, rest into that open space. You can kind of relax your right arm. Let your belly soften every time you exhale. One more breath out. And then start to create a similar feeling twist on the other side. So just roll those knees in the other direction, put a little pressure in the back of the left arm to open the right arm. And then when that right arm's open, let go of the pressure. It was my friend's birthday today and she was talking this week about, she wasn't sure she was gonna do anything for it. because she's like, I'm just really not a fan of getting older. And I was like, well, I mean, it beats the alternative. I'm not getting older. She told me I'm too much of a ray of sunshine and to shut up. But I guess I get to stay with some stuff like that in yoga class. Keep cultivating that PMA and that gratitude. And may we all get much, much, much older. One more sweet round of breath. Inhale and exhale. And start to come out of it. Bringing your feet down, letting your knees knock against each other for a moment. Now you can take a classic Shavasana shape where you just lay flat on your back. Maybe you uh, lay in this position. Maybe you just gently roll over, grab that pillow. And you could lay it flat underneath your rib cage. I like to fold it over just to give a little extra oomph, especially since my pillow is kind of small. You can have like a rolled up hoodie or rolled up towel or something or just decide that it's not that necessary. What we're going to do is take this underneath 
the very middle point of the rib cage. So if you ever have worn a bra, it would be about that point, a heart monitor, or just knowing those points of your um, shoulder blades are about the middle point of your ribs. You should have your shoulder, the tops of your shoulders are off, the bottoms of your ribs are off. And it should be in such a place where probably you can take your hands back and fold them behind your head. If that's real intense, you might grab another pillow if one happens to be nearby, or you might decide that you should have this pillow unfolded. For me, wide legs and straight-ish legs feels pretty good. You might decide that bent knees feels a little bit more supportive, but then you also might need to kind of fidget a little bit to find just the right place. Feel free to take some fidgets and to also say, nah, this pillow thing is not for me today. You get to decide. Wherever you feel good about resting, allow your breath to soften. Feel the rib cage rising and falling with your breath. And we'll be here for a couple of minutes. So if you are here for a minute or two and then you're like, oh, that's enough of this expansive lifted chest face, then you just come on down and go ahead and roll yourself off of it. Scooch that pillow off to the side and come to lay in a little bit more flat or in another supportive position. That's very well.
start to come back to your breath. Appreciating the clarity of your breath. The calming, smoothing rhythm of your inhale and exhale. When you're ready, start to roll yourself over to one side, taking a moment to pause and gratitude for this practice and gratitude for your breath and gratitude for this body that you are occupying. And gratitude for the experiences and the growth that you have experienced while occupying this body. And when you're ready, find your own version of a comfortable seat. It doesn't need to look anything like yoga. Just find a seated position, perhaps one where you can bring your hands up to your heart. And from this place, we will seal our practice, releasing one ohm together. It could be a death growl, whatever you like. Breathe in. Uh... Bowing down to the love and light, the light and the darkness that resides within each of us. Namaste. Thanks, Beth and Jamie. Take care. Bye. Oh, no, I can't hear you. Muted. Thanks, Heather. Nice to see you, Annie. We were just talking about uh, in Australia, it's going to be spring. And I was like, what? <laughs> Sabina yeah. sent me something and I was like, what? <laughs> it was quite warm yesterday. I got to wear a crop top and you know, it was really nice. All right. Yeah. Cool. Ah, um. Yeah, so I have a Cash App and a PayPal and a Venmo. Uh, let me put here. Very much April. I hope you have a lovely rest of your Sunday and the rest of you as well. <laughs> have a lovely day, Annie. Thanks for being here. Have wonderful days. I'm gonna put this up on the uh, on YouTube soon, and yeah, enjoy the fresh air. Yes, thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.